So continuing from where we left off last day, how are we going to solve force problems? Well, the big tool is going to be a free body diagram, what we abbreviated as an FBD. We're going to draw an arrow for each force that acts on an object. F net will never appear on our free body diagram because that's the vector sum of all the forces on the free body diagram. We're going to label all our arrows. I usually put the tail of the arrow at the center of the object unless it's just awkward. My friend who actually typed these notes up, he also adds acceleration and velocity with squiggly arrows. I tend to just put forces on my free body diagrams most of the time. And then we're going to use our knowledge of Newton's laws, Newton's first and Newton's third, to figure out if we're missing any forces. Then we're going to write a net force equation. Our net force equation will be derived by using a tug of war analogy this year too. We're going to ask ourselves which force is winning. And then we're going to use, who remembers from last year? Winner minus loser equals F net. Although if you want to, you can cross out F net and you can say the net force is just MA. We went to winner minus loser equals MA. And it's because F doesn't equal MA technically. It's not F equals what what. I should say F net equals what what MA. This is going to allow us to avoid having to decide which way is positive, which way is negative. We're going to, Francesca, let positive be whatever makes the math easier often down in this unit will be positive. Example five, a 2000 Newton rock hanging from a rope accelerates upwards at three meters second squared. A says, draw a free body diagram. I'm gonna do my free body diagram right here. There's the mass. What are the forces acting on this mass? Get the obvious one. When I said get the obvious one last year, which one did I mean, folks? We went systematically. So get the obvious one. I know gravity is acting downwards, and I calculate that by mg. We draw our free body diagrams roughly to scale. And what I mean by roughly to scale, if I know two forces are the same size, I'll try and make the arrows the same length. If I know one force is larger, I'll make that arrow larger. Which way is this rock accelerating? Which way must there be a larger unbalanced force pointing? So which way am I going to draw a bigger arrow? And that's tension. So A says draw a free body diagram. Check. B says compare the forces that act on the object. We did that with our arrow lengths. Check. C says write a net force equation. Which force is winning? Which force is losing? What's that going to equal? What does winner minus loser always equal? MA. MA. And from this, as far as I'm concerned, I can give you the acceleration and say find the tension. I can give you the tension and say find the acceleration. Or new this year, I can give you the tension, the acceleration, and say what does the mass have to be? Okay. Uh, what's D wanting us to find? Tension? How would I get the T by itself? So you're saying that tension equals mg plus ma or ma plus mg? What's mg? Oh, you just killed me. No, you just killed me. What are the units next to that 2,000? Kilograms? then don't be telling me that's a mass. What's mg? 2,000. I gave you mg. I gave you the weight, not the mass. So mg is actually just 2,000, because I already multiplied by 9.8 for you. Oh, no. So if that's the case, how would I find m if I know the weight? Divide by 9.8. So in the next line expression for m, I'll go 2,000 over 9.8. And what was a? Okay. We don't put a negative in for 9.8 in this unit. We'll take care of the negatives and positives by winner minus losers. I can't believe I got you with that.
I get 2,000 plus 2,000 divided by 9.8 times 3. It's going to be around 2,600. What do we get? So if I go to 3 sig figs, I'll go 2,610 newtons. Is that all right? Oh, I see a vote question coming up again. Oh, boy, a thought puzzle. It says this. For, is it correct to say that if the rock in example 5 is moving upwards, then tension, which is 2610, must always be larger than the weight of the rock, 2000? Is it correct to say that if the rock is moving upwards, tension will always be bigger than mg? Who says, Mr. Duick? This is obvious. True. Of course it is. Really? Who says, false. Tension doesn't have to be bigger than the weight of the rock. Who didn't vote? What are you going with? Let's go. Who didn't vote? What are you going with? Who didn't vote? Start moving. <laughs> and there's one more that I missed, and I've forgotten who it was, but I'll get you next time. Convince me. Francesca. No other forces, just this picture. So I'll say that, just with this. Oh! Hey, y'all, stop popping on my boat. Can't believe you people are following Parker. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I said moving upwards. Did I say accelerating upwards? So what if A is zero? What if it's moving upwards at a constant speed? Oh, and if the forces are balanced, is tension bigger than? If A is zero, tension equals mg. Ooh, example seven. Okay, I've just told you that it can be equal to mg. Is it possible for the rock to be moving upwards and for tension to be less than mg? Once again, we're going to vote. Once again, how high you hold your hand up is how sure you are of the answer. So can you be moving upwards and have tension be less than mg? Hmm. Who says, Mr. Duick, this is easy? Yes, of course you can be moving upwards and have tension less than mg. Spencer? Okay. I got one. This, it, you gotta keep your hand up long enough for me to count. Two. Okay. Who says, no! Can't be less. You're moving upwards. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Logan, commit. Language, little Simba. You going yes? So I'm up to three. No, 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 no. It's it's only two people on yes. Well, no, Spencer and you. Yeah. And Logan just jumped in. Yeah. Convince me. Yeah. We're on the earth. Yeah. I got saved face, but Why is yes the correct answer? Damn. God, man. <laughs> I couldn't have planned that any better. 
First of all, what? Which way? First of all, if oh, if tension, if well, Parker, what? Can, can you be moving up but yeah. accelerating well, down? What would that mean? Oh, oh, moving up but slowing down. You're accelerating downwards, even though you're moving upwards. Which means which way must the larger force be pointing? Down. Downwards. <laughs> Moving up but slowing down means acceleration is down. So winner is down. Tension must be low. Uh, gravity must be, what, what did I say here? Uh, tension must be less than gravity. Gravity must be winning. I do like the chord tension on a mass. I already introduced it to you last year, but you can see now there's some deep physics that we can really ponder around Newton's laws here, Alicia. There's some really good stuff we can have our ah moment. Have I, is that, you okay with that? Have I convinced you? Okay. And again, what what are we doing? Again, it's the classic and one of the toughest physics mistakes to avoid mixing up velocity and acceleration thinking the direction that we're moving is the direction we're accelerating. They're totally different. Usually, eventually, they become related, but they don't have to be. Yeah. Okay, if you were in zero G, then it would be impossible because there would be no gravity. But would there be a tension? Well, yeah, you could be constantly accelerating the rope up and apply a tension with no gravity. Yes. So, a little technical comment on forces and vectors. If the mass of example five, the rock is accelerating down, we have two choices. We could let down be negative and up be positive, but I think I convinced you last year, Liz, it was much easier, instead of always saying that down was negative or left was negative, let positive be whichever way is winning. It's much easier just to think that way. So rather than always letting things be down negative, especially this year when we're going to have more than one mass where this mass is accelerating to the right, and we would call that positive, but this mass is accelerating down, which we would call negative, let's just decide who's winning. That's going to be positive. Okay. I have maybe my favorite demonstration of all time. Pause. I forgot to record which questions are for homework, so I'll repeat myself. So for those of you watching at home, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, skip 8, 9, skip 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I guess I could have just said skip 10 and skip 8.